In today's video, I'm gonna cover why you should never hold your bow grip like this, where you put all the pressure up into the grip here, and I'm gonna show you how to hold the grip properly with a lot of details. That way you'll be able to do it better at home and hopefully shoot better as well. So I've coached a fair amount of people recently and a lot of them end up holding the bow grip in this type of fashion where they're pushing the pressure up into the pivot point of the grip and not holding the bow grip properly. So this can cause all sorts of different issues. I've got a camera downrange and I'm gonna shoot here at 30 meters and that way you'll be able to see what's happening on the impact points on the target, why doing this and changing the position of your hand is not a good idea. As well as I'm gonna show you how to get into the correct positions so that way you can shoot stronger shots at home and better groups in the end. So basically there are two spots on the grip. There is the pivot point or the throw to the grip and then there is the pressure point where you push the pressure into the grip ideally. You'll see that I have a little bit of a marking here on this grip itself. This is a grip of mine that Arcor makes. I'll have links in the description below for those as well. Be sure to use code Kaminsky uh, at checkout for 10% off. But you'll see there's a bit of a traction-y type of stuff, like goo there, right? That is where you put pressure into the grip. So the pivot point and the pressure point are different. Why I'm saying you should push into the pressure point is it's much stronger. It's a lot stronger position to be in. It's more efficient to push into the bow. You'll have less variance from shot to shot, and that means tighter groups downrange. I'm gonna shoot a shot or two here with the proper grip position so you can get an idea as to what I'm talking about. And then I'll start to do it improperly and then I'll give you some more details on how I do it properly specifically so that way you can mimic it at home. Also, YouTube has this new thing called chapters. I'm trying it out. So I basically break down each video so you can skip ahead to each portion if you need. And uh, that way you don't miss out on anything and you know what's coming later in the video. So again, like I said, I'm here at 30 meters. I'll shoot a shot or two to show you the proper grip position so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. And so you'll see there, what I'm doing is I'm pushing into the lower point of the grip, that pressure point of the grip itself. Turn the camera a little bit so you'll see a little, little bit better. There. Now, what I want you to avoid is to push up into the pivot point of the grip. So the pivot point of the grip is that, that deep part of the grip where the throat is. You want to have contact there, but not all the pressure up in that spot. So I'm gonna shoot another arrow here, not correctly, shooting with the pressure up into the pivot point, and you'll see what will happen. There's gonna be a few different things that are gonna happen here. So you see that the clicker clicked early, right? So if you're using a clicker on an Olympic style recurve or bare bow or any other style of shooting that's a single string bow, it changes your draw length if you push up into the pivot point or the pressure point. So variance there obviously would not be good due to as you draw the bow back further, you get more power out of it and more power behind a little lightweight arrow will make a big difference on the target compared to a shot with less power behind it, right? So you want it to be consistent first and foremost due to that factor. But I'm gonna short draw this time so I can still use my clicker and put that pressure point into the throat of the grip or the pivot point and watch the impact on the target. I'm going to still aim in the middle, by the way. This is so hard. And you'll see the arrow actually impacted slightly lower. So I'm gonna put a lot more pressure into that throw to the grip. See if I can really exaggerate it. And you can see how I'm drifting not only lower on the target face, but also further to the left. Compare that position that I'm putting my hand into the bow grip with the ideal position. And I'll do that on this shot. And you'll see. <laughs> and you'll see how much higher I hit on the target face itself. The pressure point and the pivot point, changing the pressure, changing the amount of effort you put into each spot, will change your vertical impact point on the target every single time. The idea is to maintain that consistency. Now, 
if you put the pressure into the pivot point every single time consistently, then I'd say you'd be fine. But due to what I know about the human system, as you get under pressure and stress, your system starts to dump hormones into your body. And because of that, it affects your muscles, not just the amount that they fire, how fast they fire, but also the feel of them as well. So if under pressure, you're feeling differently and you're trying to exert some sort of force by pushing into only the throat of the grip, only the pivot point of the grip, it may not be consistent from shot to shot when you start to have dopamines and all sorts of different uh, chemicals being dumped into your system that you deal with under pressure. Instead of pushing into the throat of the grip, I always advocate to push as if you never even had a hand, like a stump, and you want to push into the pressure point. Why I'm saying to push why you never even had a hand, if you look at the way the bones are structured in the wrist that come from the forearm through the wrist into the hand, it would make sense that the pressure would go straight into the pressure point of the grip instead of flexing flexor muscles in your forearm and pushing pressure into the throat of the grip there. Do you see the difference between the two? The pressure is coming through the bones, into the wrist, and into the pressure point. But if I add pressure up high, like this, Yes, the pressure is coming through here into the throat of the grip, but I'm having to activate these flexor muscles in my forearm. And those flexor muscles in the forearm are very susceptible to pressure, fatigue, and all sorts of different things. So if you're shooting high draw weight, high volumes of arrows, and high pressure, forget being consistent. Pushing without a hand is the way to go. So I'll, de so I'll demonstrate it one more time, and you'll see I always set my hand up into the throat of the grip like this, where I'm pushing into the, the pivot point, but then I let my hand fall into the pressure point like this. It gets my hand into a consistent placement every single time without me only pushing down low into the grip and letting my hand slide up. That's not consistent. I go first into the throat of the grip, the pivot point, down into the pressure point, relax the hand, and push through the forearm into that pressure point. and the shot breaks nice and easy. So what you want to do is to, like I said, just push as if you didn't have a hand. Now, there are some other details on how to properly put your hand into the bow, and I will have links in the description below and a card at the top up there on some videos that I've created that are very similar to this one. But I wanted to expand upon those videos in addition to pushing without a hand and explain to you what needs to happen because in my discord server which is attached through my patreon page it has come up that there is a bit of confusion as to how much pressure to push into the pressure point of the grip and how much pressure should be in the pivot point as if there should be a ratio there kind of is a ratio but I don't have any load cells to put on the two points of the grip to see where where the pressure is and how much you know pressure is in each one. Maybe at some point in the future I'll be able to do that, but the main point is to maintain the contact into the throat or the pivot point of the grip. You then want to push and focus the pressure through the pivot point and push that pressure towards the target, ideally in the center of the target or whatever you're aiming at. The reason I say to push without the hand is because it relaxes it down automatically. You still have contact into the throat of the grip because if I did not relax my hand and I tried to focus and hyper focus the pressure down low, I would lose contact with the throat of the grip. And if I did not have a finger sling and I pulled back even more, I can literally lose contact with the throat of the grip but still put pressure in the pressure point. And you do not want to do that. Because if I do that, see what happens on the target. As you put pressure up high into the throat, you'll see the arrows went lower. Now if I put a lot of pressure down low and have no contact into the throat, even though I do the same thing here, you'll see that the arrow goes even higher. Now at 30 meters, that little bit of variance that you're seeing about this much is huge in, as far as like a world-class archer is concerned. And once you go back to the Olympic distance, 70 meters, we're talking feet in difference on the target face from the low, low to the high, high pressure. So you'll see how that is not also the way to go either because again, you're adding flexing of the forearm. You're no longer using the flexors, you're now using the extensors. And it's again the same type of problem. You want to just relax the hand as if you didn't have a hand and push through the grip in the wrist, through the 
forearm into that contact point, the pressure point of the grip. But you do also need to maintain some sort of stability left or right. In addition to putting the hand properly in the grip, like I referenced in that previous video, I also maintain that left to right balance. And I do actually push a little bit with the thumb towards the target. You'll see if I were to push with the pinky, the thumb would come back. And if I pushed with the thumb, the pinky would come back. So I am doing a little bit of manipulation there left or right to make sure that the wrist is stacked and locked in the left to right position. And I kind of let it float in the up or down position, but push into that pressure point nice and low. I don't, again, overextend to lose that contact because the contact is extremely important. So when I'm here and I'm in this position, when I go into the throat of the grip, push in, then I go down, I lock the wrist left or right, I don't let it change so I can see the backside of my hand. It's as if I'm telling you, which would be my bow, to stop, and then I just have my fingers curled down like this. You'll see that I didn't change this relationship. I'm not saying stop and curling my hand so my hand's not slipping to the left of the bow, and I'm also not saying stop with my hand pushed in. It's stop flat like this, maintain the position, and the fingers curl, then the thumb slightly pushes to the target to lock this orientation that way. So from your perspective, if the target was that way, the hand is like this, curled nice and flat. And then the thumb kind of is pushing slightly to the target, the pinky's coming back slightly, and I'm pushing nice and low through the wrist, through the forearm, into the grip. I'm not doing this, and I'm not letting my hand do that either. So I'll do it again one more time, properly. Go into the pivot point, down into the pressure point, relax, lock it left and right, keep with the pressure. and I'm driving that pressure exactly where I want that arrow to go. The reason you don't want to push into the throat of the grip or lose contact with the throat of the grip is again, just consistency from shot to shot due to the hormones that get dumped into the system when you're under pressure, whether that be in your backyard and you're trying to shoot a 30 after you've shot two 10s and you want to shoot another 10 for 30 or maybe 60, or you're shooting a personal best in your backyard, you're at a local tournament, you're at a 3D tournament, you're out at nationals, at the Olympic games, whatever it is, or even in the tree stand, spot and stalking, whatever you're doing, you need to make sure you maintain control of the grip consistently. And this is the only way to do it unless you shoot hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of arrows all the time and you just know what you're doing and you're extremely strong and robust. That doesn't happen, not in archery. There are a lot of successful archers out there that just push into the grip exactly how I'm describing and the vast majority of them do it that way. I'm sure there's some anomalies, I'm sure there's some exceptions, but I can't name any and that's why I didn't say nobody does that, but I'm sure there's somebody out there. So again, let me do it one more time correctly into the pivot point or to the throat of the grip, down into the pressure point, lock my left and right, keep it, lift with the pressure, keep the pressure going. And finish the shot with that driving force continuing until that arrow hits the target. And that's how you hold the bow correctly. That's how you push pressure into the grip correctly. And hopefully that'll result in some better scores downrange. If you like this video, consider sharing it, subscribing it, hitting the notification bell if you're interested. Also, check out all the links in the description below and ways to support this channel. I make this content for free for everybody around the world to enjoy. And also, keep an eye out for a few new products I'm working on. I've got the Veins, the Wave Pros. Those will be coming out soon. And these here I haven't talked about yet. Some fancy, fancy, fancy limb bolts. Do sign up for the mailing list on my website, jcomincy.com. I also have links in the description for that and a card at the top of there because I'm about to announce releasing these limb bolts as well as the veins. They are coming soon and you'll be the first to know if you sign up for that mailing list on my website.